top USAC drivers in the nation make their annual pilgrimage to the desert for this Phoenix 150. They brought their racers here from Ontario, California, where they ran just one week prior to this one. Bobby Unser won the California 500, and a checkered flag today would give him two back-to-back -back wins and a heads-up favorite for the Indy 500. These two races are considered by the drivers and mechanics as an excellent shakedown cruise for their new cars before heading to the May Classic at Indianapolis. With all final preparations completed, drivers are called to their cars, and the boarding procedure is underway. There's a thunderous roar from the machinery, as well as the spectators, when the announcement is made to start engines. in the Viceroy car number 15 starts on the pole position with Johnny Rutherford in car three alongside. Starting in the third spot is Bobby Unser driving the Olsenite Eagle number 48. In the fourth position, car nine, Lloyd Ruby, the driver. The third row consists of car 14, A.J. Foyt, and seven, Gordon Johncock. Then it's Mario Andretti and Gary Bettenhausen. The fifth row features George Snyder driving the Gilmore Racing Special number 82 and Wally Dallenbach in car two. These are the top 10 that bring this 20 car field screaming under the green flag and they're off. After a wild scramble into turn one, Johnny Rutherford comes out with the lead. Al Unser is second, Bobby third. Through the third pocket, A.J. Foyt in the red number 14 is running fourth and begins to close on Bobby Unser. At the end of the first lap, Gordon Johncock in the blue number seven moves up to take over fifth place behind Foyt. They're wound up now. flag of the day came out on lap nine when Jimmy Carruthers and Raj McCluskey brushed entering turn one. Carruthers lost it, spun, and hit the outside retaining wall. Jimmy is all right, but his Cobra Firestone special number 21 is out of the race. Al Unser and Johnny Rutherford, the two leaders, took this opportunity to pit. Unser was out first, and this put his number 15 Viceroy Special up front on the restart. There's the green, and this race is once again underway. Al Unser leads Foyt and Johncock through turn one. Lloyd Ruby is running fourth. really pours it on down the long back chute and stretches his lead over Foyt and John Cotter. through the fourth turn, he dives low and heads for the pits. He was running so strong, and all of a sudden, the car just seemed to quit. When the crew check it out, they find a loose turbo connection. Then they send him back out, but now Foyt has the lead. punches his blue number seven around Foyt on the outside to grab the front spot and drop A.J. to second place. Wally Dallenbach is third with Tom Sneva a close fourth. The second spinner of the 
the day belongs to Raj McCluskey in the Lindsay Hopkins car number one. He lost it entering the turn, spun, and hit the wall. That puts another car out of the race. Meanwhile, with the yellow flag out, there's a rash of pit stops. Shortly after the green flag came out and the restart underway, A.J. Foyt took command in the red Gilmore Racing Special number 14. Wally Dallenbach second in car two and Tom Sneva had moved into third in car 24. Entering the third turn, Sneva fires past Dallenbach to take over the second place spot and now begins to close the gap on A.J. Battle is on as Foyt and Sneva start to stretch third place Wally Dallenbach in the blue car number two. While Wally screams by, Foyt slowed up in the fourth turn and headed for the pits. It was a short stop, but it cost him the lead. There goes another one. It all ended for race leader Tom Sneva on lap 65 when a rear shock broke and sent the car on a wild spinner in the third turn. The caution lights were lit, but only long enough to get him off the track. Then the green flew again. is out in front now and flying. Boyd holds the second spot with Johnny Rutherford back up in third place. The wall almost claimed another car. This time it was Lloyd Ruby in number nine. He lost it, spun, but stayed off the guardrail. With the yellow out, several cars pitted for fuel, including Lloyd Ruby. He came in for a suspension adjustment, lost a couple of laps, but went back in the race. The green flag came out on the 100th lap, and with it came A.J. Foyt back in the lead. Simon is second in car number 98. Mike Mosley has the third spot. Mike started last in this one. He's driven a strong, consistent race all the way, and he even looks better now. Foyt relinquished the lead on lap 109 when he made a 14-second pit stop to take on fuel to go the distance. When A.J. came back on the track, he found that Mike Mosley owned the lead in car 98. The boy that started dead last was now the front runner, and that's some kind of a ride. Foyt moves from sixth to fifth when he passes Mario Andretti down the front chute. Bobby Unser is fourth, Dick Simon third, John Cock second. Bobby Unser moves into second place when he passes John Cock, and Dick Simon wheels his big number 44 into the pits for fuel. Foyt is in the fourth spot now and presses John Cock hard through every turn. Entering turn three, he gets a wheel on the inside of Gordy and powers the big red coyote through the hole to take over third. But he's a long way from the front spot. Mike Mosley has opened up a seven-second lead over second place, Bobby Unser. There it is, the white flag. One more lap, and the boy who started last will finish first. Number 48, Bobby Unser holds down on second. With number 14, A.J. Foyt, third. There's the checkered flag, the rainbow, and the pot of gold from Mike Mosley, who streaks across the finish line, winner of the Phoenix 150. Mike blew the clutch out the day before trying to qualify. For this reason, he started last. And now, while pulling into victory lane, the water pump on his off the eagle gave out. But all the parts lasted long enough to give him his first championship win in four years. And he was a very happy boy.